What is going on everybody? It is Trib from Trib Talks here and today what we are going to do is recap the week number seven matchup between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Cincinnati Bengals. But before we do that, go ahead and drop a like down below if you already aren't missing Jalen Ramsey after the Jaguars' four turnover performance against the Cincinnati Bengals. And without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, we have a recap to do. We have a lot to discuss. We need to give out Player of the Week's awards, and we need to give out position grades. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Jacksonville Jaguars versus Cincinnati Bengals. Week number seven, recap, position grades, and Players of the Week. All right, and just like every single recap, what we are going to do is start with talking about the offensive side of the ball. And we're going to flip it. We're going to start with this offensive line. I think up front, this was one of the better performances that this offensive line had in the run game. Obviously, you got games like against Denver, where Leonard Fournette did put up over 200 yards rushing. That offensive line did a really, really solid job in that game as well. But this was a really good showing by these guys up front. Leonard Fournette seemed like he just had so many holes to run through, and, you know, the running lanes were open every single play and I think Leonard only took one hit for a loss in that game when he was running the football so you know that's always a good sign you know when you're opening up big enough run lanes where Leonard's always getting positive yardage but obviously that's just a really good part of Leonard's game but we got guys like Brandon Linder, AJ Can, Will Richardson, Cam Robinson, Jay Juan Taylor those guys are all playing really really well up front however in the past game I do want to see them step up a little bit you know, Geno Atkins, eight. I think he had two or three sacks, and he had a couple of tackles. He was a big part of the Bengals' defense. Probably, like, the only member of the Bengals' defense that really stood out, you know. Other than the guy who had the cast on his hand that almost got two picks. I can't even think of what his name is, but they brought him up quite a bit. So him and Geno Atkins were really the two guys that stood out the most in this Bengals game from this Bengals uh, defense. Geno Atkins recorded the two sacks on Gardner Minshew. Uh, whether that is on Andrew Norwell or Gardner Minshew's pocket presence, I would say that it was more on Andrew Norwell. You know, on those two sacks, uh, one of them was Will Richardson, one of them was Andrew Norwell. He completely just blew Andrew Norwell off the line of scrimmage and basically was in Gardner Minshew's lap, like right when he dropped back to throw. So there was no hope on that one. Geno Atkins was going to get that sack either way. Same thing with Will Richardson. He just kind of finessed him. And obviously, you know, Will Richardson, he's still young. Andrew Norwell, you know, he's been in the league a little bit longer. And you expect more out of him when he became the highest paid guard when the Jaguars signed him. He's been a flop this season in the past game. But he did end up grading out really well on Pro Football Focus's grades this week. I think it was like a 77 or a 78 or something like that. And he was like the third highest graded uh, Jaguar player from that game. So Andrew Norwell obviously did some good things on the ground. And, you know, that's obviously going to be the glaring issue with this offensive line. That's going to be what you guys talk about. And I think that's been kind of the problem just like all season. You know, this inside offensive line, the guards have been a problem because, you know, Doug Marone insists on doing this whole two right guard thing with AJ Can and Will Richardson, which I don't like. I think you need to, like, I've, I've been vocal about that. I don't like that idea. I think you need to have, you know, a whole starting five offensive line out there at all times, and you just, you just don't fuck with that. Like, you don't bring in extra guys. And then, you know, Andrew Norwell seems like he's been getting kind of a pass recently. Like, they're like, oh, we're paying him a lot of money, so we're not going to bench him. You know, they haven't even really given it any thought to start AJ Can and Will Richardson at that guard spot, even though Andrew Norwell has been kind of a flop in the past game. But maybe what he does in the run game is just enough to, you know, keep him there and make sure that AJ Can and Will Richardson both get some playing time at that other guard position. So this offensive line as a whole, I'm going to be giving them a B- minus on the day. They did really well in the run game, like I've stated a lot of times, but not so well in the past game, also like I've stated a bunch of times. Now we're going to be going on to the other side of that run game that was so successful in this game against the Bengals. We're going to be talking about your AFC leading rusher, second in the league in rushing yards, Leonard Fournette. Now let's take some time to appreciate Leonard Fournette before we talk about his game against the Bengals. Like, has anybody had a more drastic turnaround in 2019 than Leonard Fournette? How many of you guys actually expected, like, after, like, all of 2018 and then all, like, the first two, three weeks of Leonard Fournette's play, did any of you guys think that he was going to put together 
a season that he's been putting together. He's breaking records. You know, he's on pace for 2,000, like, all-purpose yards. And the record, of course, was set by Maurice Jones-Drew. He's on pace to beat that. He has the most rushing yards in Jaguar history through their, like, first 28 career games, beating out Fred Taylor. Like, he has been a consistent piece to this offense, and he has grown a lot as a player and as a person as well. And I think there's a lot, you know, to do with that with just a lot of self-motivation, you know. And hopefully he really does want to be there because now he looks like one of the guys that just truly wants to be a Jaguar. Like, he's he knew, like, when the Jags traded Jalen Ramsey and he knew, like, when Jalen wasn't playing that obviously there was an opportunity that he was going to get traded. I think um, Leonard really took that opportunity to say, okay, if Jalen gets traded, this is my team. Like, I'm the face of this franchise. You know, the offense runs through me. I want to lead by example. I want to be a leader. And I'm going to go out there and lead my guys. And so far, that is what he's been doing. And he's been an excellent leader to this offense. Having him as an outlet for Gardner Minshew has been so important in Gardner Minshew's development and not enough can be said about how tremendous Leonard Fournette has been all season long and this game was no different he ran for 131 yards like I said the offensive line opened up holes big enough for like a freak train to run through so Leonard was able to make a lot out of his opportunities and make sure each time he touched the ball that he was you know gonna break it off or have a really impressive run you know he he went out there he did his thing Leonard Fournette definitely gets an A plus from me not much else he could have done besides maybe score that touchdown on fourth and one in the first half but you know um the first half was a little tricky because you know the Jags it never seemed like the game was in doubt like we were down six to seven at halftime but I never during the half ever felt like oh shit we might lose to the Bengals like no I knew that Josh Lambeau, you know, if anything, if we can't score touchdowns, I know Lambeau's going to be booting those field goals through the literal best kicker in the league. And, you know, like like Leonard Fournette, man, you can't say enough about what Josh Lambeau has brought to this team. You know, it's hard to find a consistent kicker like him. So, you know, even if we weren't going to be getting into the end zone, you know, I knew Lambeau would knock a field goal through and our defense played really well. And we'll dive more into our defense here in a little bit but you know the game was never really in doubt but the first half you know we went forward on fourth and goal at the one yard line Leonard tried jumping it into the end zone like he so often does and he got denied and you know I think they're going to expect that because Leonard's done that a couple of times you know obviously the two most iconic were the two they did against Pittsburgh one in the playoffs and one in the regular season you know Leonard did that and that's kind of been his trademark for a long time so I think teams are kind of you know getting used to that you know, getting used to knowing what Leonard does inside the one-yard line when they need to uh, score a touchdown. So I think that was game-planned a little bit. I think they kind of knew that was going to happen. And, you know, uh, Leonard could have got in. And that's a surprising stat for Leonard today. I was looking at his overall stats today, and he only has one rushing touchdown. Like, that's insane. Like, from how much, like, he's just been dominant, like, this season only having one rushing touchdown, that is crazy to me, but... He definitely, you know, earned his keep out there when he was playing for the Jaguars. And I really think that he's trying to step up and be a leader and really be the true face of the franchise now that Jalen Ramsey is gone and be, the, you know, the guy that, you know, you associate the team with. Obviously, I think that guy is Calais Campbell, but you can see, like, where, you know, casual fans or fans of, like, other teams that don't really watch y'all like, they're, they're going to assume that Leonard Fournette's the face of the franchise, Not, and I don't think they would think that about Calais Campbell, even though Calais Campbell definitely is the most Duval out of anybody on this Jaguar team. I just think that Leonard, again, you know, is taking this opportunity to really, really uh, get in the role of being a leader and get into the role of being the face of this Jaguar franchise. Now let's talk about the quarterback, and for some reason, y'all really wanted to talk about Gardner Minshew, like, in my game recap in the community post, y'all, uh... He also said a lot of things about Gardner Minshew, and you know, now is the time that is going, it's going to get really, really tricky, like, on what the Jaguars are going to do moving forward this season. I think a lot of it depends on week-to-week basis. I don't think that there's a final decision in right now whether the Jags are going to put Nick Foles back in when he gets healthy or, you know, keep rolling with Gardner Minshew. I think the whole argument with rolling with the hot hand is kind of over by this point because... Gardner Minshew has lost some games and, you know, there has been like the Saints game, for example, where he did not play so well. And this Bengals game, he didn't necessarily blow anybody away. He did make some smart throws and he made some good throws, but, you know, nothing like 
excellent or superb that'll make you say, oh, you know, he definitely deserves that starting spot, you know, because Nick Foles never really did anything to lose that spot, so I think, I don't know, I don't really know where I stand with that, I just think using the whole running with the hot hand thing is a little bit overplayed at this point, uh, it depends on how the Jags really do against the Jets this upcoming week, really, also on what the decision is going to be, because the Jags are at 500 heading into the London game, like, I don't think you want to play Foles in the London game. I think you want to play Minshew in the London game because, you know, he's already been out there, and I think the London fans will pop for the stash. So, you know, I think it depends these next three weeks on how well Gardner really does if he uh, continues to be the quarterback for the Jacksonville Jaguars. But he had a pretty solid outing. He had 255 total uh, passing yards with a passing touchdown to your boy Keelan Cole. Who else here forgot that Keelan Cole was on the roster? I completely forgot Keelan Cole even played for us, but he reeled himself in a touchdown pass. DJ Chark uh, with a impressive catch down the sidelines that he placed, you know, right in the right place. And, you know, he was throwing good balls. And the thing is, is that you know he's a rookie quarterback, but he just he doesn't really play like one. Like, that's what I'm saying with the impressiveness of his starting uh, potential is that, like, you know, it's not blowing me away. But then you kind of got to take a step back and realize, oh, this is a rookie oh, this is a six-round rookie, like, you know, he's putting up these numbers that are really, you know, good numbers, and I think as of now, he probably leads the race for rookie of the year, like, Gardner Minshew has done what he needs to do, and he's done it well, and I think, you know, without a doubt, this guy is the future of the Jacksonville Jaguars, and this is kind of what I tweeted out today, that I think Nick Foles is the present for the Jags, but Minshew's the future, so, you know, it's hard. It's really hard because, you know, the rolling with the hot hand argument, you know, I don't really like that anymore. But this is kind of like saying rolling with the hot hand, you know, if if Foles is 5-4 and four after the bye week and, you know, everything's kind of just, everybody's kind of just getting used to the flow of Gardner Minshew being the quarterback, do you really want to mess with that, really? Do you really want to, like, you know, thrust Nick Foles in there and say, all right, here's your new quarterback, here's, you know, Foles does this, 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 you know, having a new quarterback, you know, that late in the season, I don't know how I feel about that, I think, you know, keeping Minshew in in that aspect, I think, makes a whole lot of sense, I don't know, I'm just, I'm just as confused as y'all, like, I don't know what the Jaguars are going to do, and it's going to be an interesting next couple of weeks, especially if the Jaguars keep winning football games, but Gardner Minshew had a good game, and I'm going to be giving him an A on the day, um, you know, maybe he'll win another Rookie of the Week this week. You know, if he's nominated, you know, the people are going to be voting for him, and they're going to be, you know, giving Gardner Minshew all the love and all the votes. So, Gardner Minshew making it out with a, uh, what did I give him? I gave him a B-, minus. I think, a B- minus or an A-, minus, and I think, you know, it's in that range. B- minus or an A- minus for Gardner. We're not too sure. We're still here talking about the Nick Foles drama because we're just so confused as to what the Jaguars are going to do, and it's, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be a wild wild ride for sure now this offense's final grade i'm going to be giving them a b plus because you know the red zone efficiency with gardner Minshew in there you know they settled for three three or four field goals um instead of getting a touchdown when they were in the red zone you know they couldn't capitalize on those opportunities and you know it just it's hard because if you can't score in the red zone like you're not going to win a lot of games if you can't get touchdowns in from five six yards deep so you know, whether that be play calling or whether that be Gardner Minshew's offensive line, you know, that's to be debated. But they're all still part of the offense. I'd like to see the red zone efficiency step up uh, for sure. And I would like to see Gardner Minshew throw more touchdown passes or Leonard Fournette run in more. But nonetheless, this offense did play a really good game. And that's why I think a B-plus for this offense is more than fair. Next up, we're going to be talking about the backbone of the Jaguars team in week number seven. They really put them back on track and the Jaguars defense may be back they definitely uh there's definitely a back breaking pick six that put the dagger in the uh Bengals offense by Yannick Ngakwe and you know Yannick Ngakwe is a guy that you're glad to see really back in uh full full effect you know what I mean uh the Jaguars had four turnovers in this game um and they had two all season long coming into this game. And Jalen Ramsey has zero turnovers. And now the Jaguar defense has four. And that is beautiful. Because we don't want Jalen Ramsey back. Because we got 
the best defense back. I don't know. I want it was better in my article. I literally wrote it's in the it'll be in the link down below, but I wrote a whole recap. There's a lot of backs in there, a lot of back jokes when I refer to the Jaguar defense because Jalen Ramsey just has a hurt back. Allegedly. Did you and I don't know I don't even know about the kid. Did you even have a kid, bro? Did you <laughs> did you I don't know what you did, bro. I don't know what you're doing. You freaking dissed us and yeah. I'm kind of just done with Jalen Ramsey. I wanted just to start off that talking about the defense with how much I hate uh, Jalen Ramsey. But first things first, let's discuss the defensive line first. I love every single member of this defensive line so much, and I truly, truly believe we have, like, the best defensive line in football. I think as far as depth goes, as far as starting four goes, I don't think there's a defensive line in the NFL that is even close to being as good as the Jacksonville Jaguars. You know, you got um, Marcel Darius on the inside, Avery Jones on the inside, Calais, Yannick, Josh Allen, Taven Bryant, bro. Let's talk about Taven Bryant for a little bit because this is a guy that I am just blown away with the year he's having because he's putting things together. He's putting himself in the right situation. He's stuffing run lanes. You know, he got his first sack of his career this season. He put the pressure on Andy Dalton that forced the pick six to Yannick and Gawkway, like, these adept guys, too. Dewan Smoot, another guy. Like, these guys are stepping up and really filling their role and coming in and playing really good football. And it's obvious because the Jaguars really have invested a lot into this defensive line. And it's good to see that investment kind of return because the Jaguars, when they make investments, normally don't get any return. But they've gotten a ton of return from this defensive line, from Clayus Campbell, Yannick Ngakwe, who they really need to pay, especially after this performance. And the guy really, really seems like he wants to be in Jackson. You know, Taven Bryan, Marcel Darius, Avery Jones, all these guys on the defensive line, they played well, they limited Joe Mixon to only 10 rushing yards, like that's impressive in its own right, it's one of the league's best running backs, and they did that, they went out there, and they did their thing, I'm going to be giving them an A+. Um, I didn't really talk about Josh Allen too much, he has 5 sacks now this season, and he's a guy that has played really, really well, and he's been kind of used sparingly, like he's not in there all the time, but when he gets in there and he gets his reps, he's really showing flashes of, you know, what what's to come for the Jaguars in the next couple of seasons. And hopefully he's paired up with Yannick and Gawkwe because, you know, that's going to be a dynamic duo for years and years to come uh, once Calais Campbell does decide to call it a career. And hopefully he does call it a career with us in Jacksonville. Um, so I'm really hoping that they lock them to him down long term. I'm going to be giving this D-line an A+. Plus. Like I said, the defense was really the backbone of this Jaguars team. Uh, in this game against the Bengals, next up with the linebackers. I mean, Quincy Williams had a really solid job. Like, he got benched, got the start this week, went out there, played really well. Miles Jack is the guy I really want to talk about because he was a guy that I've, I've just been kind of disappointed in. Because, like, he had one in this game, too. He had a personal foul penalty. It just seems like he always gets called for these 15-yard penalties, or he always has something fucking just completely unfortunate happen to him, like the whole Miles Jack wasn't down play, everything like that, like he has been probably one of the most unlucky Jaguar players, and obviously the Jags decided to extend him before extending like Yannick and Gawkway, but you know, that's neither here nor there, he did go around and have a really, really good game, he got five tackles and he got an interception that was beautiful. You know, he lurked Andy Dalton. He just seen it, jumped right in front of the route, got the pick, and it was game over. Miles Jack had a really, really solid game, and I'm going to be really happy to give these linebackers an A on the day. Miles Jack performed extremely well, and I'm very happy to see him develop and, you know, have good weeks. And I'm excited to see what he has for the rest of the season because I hope this is just some momentum. I know it's like just the Bengals, but hopefully this win builds something up within this franchise to really try and push and get to the playoffs or, you know, at least come down to like a week 17, like make or break game. You know what I mean? Like give us some hope, give us something because that's all we want as Jags fans is a little hope and a little something. So please come through with that and we'll be all right. Now let's talk about the secondary. Ronnie Harrison got an interception. DJ Hayden is playing out of his mind, and Trey Herndon continues to get bullied. Now, the more and more we realize Jalen's not gone, if we had Jalen in this game and, like, nothing was going on and he was just playing, like, oh, my God, this would be even worse than what it was, obviously, because Jalen's that type of player. But, you know, Trey Herndon continues to kind of be the punching bag for opposing quarterbacks, and I understand, like, he's just filling in for this year because, you know, we don't have – 
top notch other corner on the other side and you know this is how a lot of teams feel like not a lot of teams were fortunate enough like us to have like AJ Boye and Jalen Ramsey as corners one and two for the whole entire season but you know you see guys like DJ Hayden who performs well in the nickel he plays really good football plays downhill he's good at blitzing he's a great tackler you know he's been really impressive and he's been one of the best defenders for the Jaguars literally all season long and, you know, we're going to have to replace Trey Herndon. Uh, I don't think we'll do that, like, before the trade deadline or anything crazy like that. I think that um, we should do it, like, during the offseason. Let Trey Herndon kind of ride this out. It's going to be a learning experience for him. And, you know, week in and week out, he's going to be out there. So he's just going to continue to get better. And uh, he, I'm not going to let, you know, his performance, because he did have a couple of solid plays. I'm not going to let, you know, his slightly bad performance really hamper this secondary as a whole because they did really play a good good football game so i'm going to be giving them an a as well and overall i'm going to be giving this defense an a on the day they played terrific terrific football um they only had 33 rushing yards i think they only had like a hundred and some odd total yards like this defense played lights out they got turnovers four of them to be exact and it was fun to watch all right, and before we jump into Players of the Week, I told you to give me your best back puns and your best questions in the community tab uh, that I posted earlier today. And some of you actually gave me some pretty solid um, back puns that I could have used during my uh, defensive intro, but we are going to be reading the back puns out first. And they're actually all from the same guy. Name underscore, which is about the most uncreative name I could think of, but... I do see your comments all the time as well. I know you're loyal. You've been here for a while, and I appreciate that. So I will be reading all of these out here. 2017 through 2018 Jags. Ramsey is the goat, and Bortles is the boat. 2019 through 2020. Bortles, welcome back. Now that that right there, that right there is high quality. Because you can just, I can just imagine Blake Bortles, like right, saying that like to Jalen right when he came back. Welcome back. And then, you know, being all Blank Bortles and just like, hey, and then Jalen's like, you're trash. I don't fucking want to talk to you. You're trash. <laughs> step forward. One step forward, two steps back. My neck, my back, my anxiety attack. Uh, that's not bad. A couple of years from now, I'm going to be having flashbacks of the back injury. That one's pretty good. I like that. That was a good one. When Ramsey said he wanted a trade, the Rams said, "I, right, bro, I got your back. <laughs> that was that was pretty good. I like that one. I like that one. All right, so those, that was it for the back puns name. Thank you for those. Um, and we got a question from Busted Buns, which that's inappropriate. What do you think about Trey Herndon's progress through the last couple of games? Also, what does the coaching staff need to do to lower the amount of penalties? I'm looking at you, O-line. Uh, like I said about Trey Herndon earlier, I think he's developing, and I think that, you know, each week he's going to get better, and I think he has progressed and he has gotten better, but there are still some obvious flaws into his game. That's just going to be a common thing for a guy that really wasn't even expected to be thrusted into this kind of spotlight to begin with. So I hope, you know, with more experience comes, you know, better play for Trey Herndon, uh, for sure. Cause it, it has, for sure, like, been improving, but... It's definitely been, like, the worst defensive performer that we have out there, and it's been pretty glaringly obvious. And as the coaching staff to lower penalties, you think that if they knew the answer to that, they would have already fixed it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because, like, ever since Doug's been here, like, we have so many goddamn penalties. It's ridiculous. And, you know, I don't know what they need to do to prevent these penalties because... I don't know. <laughs> you know, we always get a lot of fucking penalties, so I don't really know what else they can do that hasn't already been tried. Next up, we got Plano Jags, and he says, Two questions for you, Tree. Why does Ramsey always show up to work looking like he just let his little girl do his hair during a daddy-daughter play session? That's a good one, and it's true, very true. He does have... He does have some whack ass hair, that's for sure. Not never very consistent with the hairstyles with Jalen Ramsey. Also, can we hire Double D as the tackling coach? I'm so oh Donovan Darius. I was thinking, you know, when I heard Double D, I was thinking of fucking uh from Ed Ed and Eddie. Double D from Ed Ed and Eddie. That was my first fucking thought. But no, I I know what you mean now. As a tackling coach, I'm so sick and tired of players trying to be torpedo tackle or whiff. 
You and me both, brother. Uh, tackling and penalties, you know, that's always going to be a problem for the Jacksonville Jaguars. It's just, it's like a law. Like, it like it goes into effect. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we, ha- we have to be really shitty at tackling, and we have to get a lot of penalties, because that's just how things have always been. Now we're going to be giving out Offensive Player, Defensive Player of the Week awards, and this week's Offensive Player of the Week should surprise none of you. It's going to be Leonard Fournette. Like I said, I love to see, I love what I'm seeing from him. I love the continued growth, and I hope he just keeps on getting better and better. The Defensive Player of the Week, man, this is a hard one, but I'm going to give it to Miles Jack. I think Miles Jack deserves it with the turnover and the tackles and everything, but you could also give it to guys like Yannick Ngakwe, who clearly got the pick six. Josh Allen got a sack, you know, uh, defensive, Taven Bryan even, <laughs> like you can make an argument for, so, but we're going to end up giving that to Miles Jack. So those are my offensive and defensive players of the week. And that was my Jacksonville Jaguars versus Cincinnati Bengals, week number seven, recap, players of the week, and position grades. What you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Troop Talks, or follow me on Instagram, at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel four days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Them just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.